Uh, we're at the Mead site today, one of three very early ancient sites in the Shaw Creek area. Swan Point is just around the corner, maybe five kilometers or so, and Broken Mammoth is maybe a, a kilometer and a half to the southwest uh, of us. But this is the least known of those three sites. Um, work has been done at Broken Mammoth for the last 20 years or so, um, but really we've just started our excavations at Mead in 2009. It was discovered in a survey program uh, in the 70s uh, related to Clearwater Lakes Development, which is near Delta, but they surveyed along the edge of Shaw Creek, and Linda Yarborough found it in 1976, I believe. But she only did a few tests. When uh, nearby Broken Mammoth was being excavated, a few of them came over here with Chuck Holmes to me to explore it, um, and found basically it was a deeply buried stratified site, very similar to Broken Mammoth, which has had a lot of news attention over the years. But there it stayed. So a few tests were dug in 1990 and 92, the landowner changed and they didn't want archaeology. So from 1992 all the way to 2009, nothing had been done at the site. And so most of the way archaeologists talked about it was, okay, Broken Mammoth and then also Mead, because it's kind of similar. And what we're finding is it's not, actually. There's quite a bit of uh, difference in the material we're finding, the, the, the site structure, some of the fauna, and the fact we're, we're getting more formal tools, certainly, in the lower components. The site is important for a number of reasons. One, it's deeply buried, so it's protected from the uh, forest soils and the upper layers, which produce a lot of acidity and essentially eat up organic artifacts. So it's buffered, so we have really good preservation of ancient faunal remains, for instance. So bison, waterfowl, even things as delicate as hare, so different kinds of rabbit and ground squirrel, those sorts of things are preserved. And so we get a really good indication of subsistence economy, diet, and then changes through time. Another element is that it's stratified, well stratified. So that means that you've got clear layering of levels. So you can actually separate components or, or cultural occupations really clearly. Right now we've identified maybe one new component this year, which puts us to eight different occupations of the site. Earliest we've dated goes back to around 13 and a half thousand years ago, which is before the Younger Dryas, it's in the Ice Age, during a period of deglaciation, period of warming, and also associated with the very earliest peoples that we know of that are coming into the new world. And the significance um, that we're finding here with, with that material is that we can now link the pre-Younger Dryas. So we can actually say the people here, at least at this site, pre and post Younger Dryas are the same people, that they managed to survive that particular cold episode, which is over a thousand years duration. And they're doing pretty much the same thing they were doing before and after. So that's kind of exciting. That's a, it lets us, it informs us more about continuity, about the stability, resilience of the adaptations that uh, these, these populations used in the past. And here you can see just really well-preserved layers. This one right here is a paleosol. So this is an ancient buried soil. So it looks a little bit different than the upper materials because this really didn't have time to mature. It's a very immature uh, uh, soil, so there's really no B horizon, which is where the uh, uh, chemicals, that, where the elements are leaching uh, out of the A. Um, and so you get a, a brownish or reddish color. We don't see that. It's just, these are just little thin A horizons. So think little, um, you know, the organic mat at the very top. Just think of it squished and just a little bit of mineral stuff left, a little bit of carbon, uh, charcoal. And so these represent surfaces and they're all flat, which is great for us. They haven't been disturbed since they've been laid down. And this rock, you can see, is laying right on it. So this is associated probably with the 12,000 year old occupation. And when Hiller gets down, we'll expand that, tie it into everything we have around it and learn more about that, that particular occupation. So you can see a color change right here. So this is the 12,300 uh, level. Down here, it's around 13,3 or so. And then below that, you see the sand. Um, so there's a major unconformity where you're shifting from sand to uh, silt deposition and uh, probably relating to the deglaciation periods.